Hey, welcome back to my channel. This is the old frag lady Sharon, and I'm going to show you how I started smelling really, really good way back in the day. It hasn't been that long ago. I've always had a love for perfume, and I think it started with my mom back in the 50s. Yes, I'm 77 years old, and uh, back in the 50s, my mother uh, started selling Avon. And I guess it was about eight or nine years old when she was doing that. And she would bring the little lipsticks home and the perfumes and stuff like that. She had a case that had all that in it. And uh, she always loved smelling good. I never, ever remember my mother not smelling like perfume or cologne or whatever she had at the time. And, uh, of course, you know, girls being girls. And I was a latchkey kid, meaning that... I left after everybody else left, and I came home before everybody else did. So I got to play in my mother's perfume all the time. I know she knew because she had to know. She would smell me. Anyway, so I started with Avon fragrances a long time ago. And then um, uh, even into my teens, I was into fragrances, but not as much. I would have one something or something else. I always bought my own, so I couldn't afford to buy more than one bottle at a time. And they were always colognes. I could never afford uh, perfume. But... Um, going fast forward into my days as a, um, I was an educator for 33 years and I always liked having a nice perfume to wear. And I was able to then splurge into the uh, arena of perfumes and my husband loved the way I smelled. So very often he would smell something on somebody else at work or something. Next thing I know he was buying it for me. He was so sweet. And so, um, it, it's the story. He came home one time, he told me he's, he smelled this perfume on this lady, and he asked her what it was, and, and she said it was um, orgasm. And he said, what? He said, yeah, it's called orgasm. <laughs> so, I don't think that's what she said. I think she said organza, but you know how men think. Anyway, that's what he brought home to me. He thought it was orgasm. And oddly enough, when you look it up, orgasm perfume, that one comes up, organza comes up. Anyway. He he bought uh, bought it for me, and he loved 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 that perfume on me. And um, for a while, I bought it, and then I just didn't buy it anymore. I started buying other stuff, but he always seemed to like what I had on. Then I kind of drifted away from you know buying a whole lot. Well, I never did have a whole lot. Maybe three bottles at a time was a whole lot for me. Till I got to like a fragrance desert. It was lotion or maybe a spritz of cologne here or there. But then I started um, looking into ways I could make my home smell really nice. And I always liked incense, but I, I didn't really use it because a lot because hemp didn't like the uh, smokiness that it would do. So I, I was always relegated to using incense when he wasn't home and uh, and then have the after effects because it would make everything smell really nice. It made kind of smoky, but um, you know I could deal with it and I thought he should have been able to, but he didn't like it. So in the meantime, I got back into it. We moved into the motorhome. We live in a 43-foot motorhome full-time. And when we moved in here, cooking in here has a tendency, it, it, the smells kind of linger because the windows aren't open, especially this time of year when it's wintertime or early spring. It's a little chilly outside. You don't have the windows open. And so the, the foods will kind of stay, you know. So what I needed some way to bring a nice fragrance into my home and not go out of here smelling like fried chicken or fried fish. Oh, Lord. So I started doing uh, some investigating about different types of incense. And um, I started with uh, this incense called Hem. This one is sandalwood. It's not my favorite one, but that's the one of the ones I started with was that. I bought a really cool looking incense burner. It has the holes in it. I don't know if you can see the holes in it the incense burner, and um, I use only one um, thing of incense in each one so that it doesn't give a whole lot of smoke off, unless I've been cooking something really. Now, if I got a great big fat batch of uh, collard greens or chitlins or something like that or fried potatoes, I may use two um, pieces, of, two sticks of incense, but generally I only use one. Then um, I started into the world of bakur, and bakur is a, um, it's, it's like a, wood shavings from agarwood that's i can't afford the agarwood so my stuff is all fake but um it gives it pretty much the same effect they got the the uh, wood shavings and they soak them in uh perfumes uh and then um you uh put it on a a coal 
and then it um, gives off a smoke. I'm not gonna open this one because I'm not using that right now, but here's one that um, I got, and I don't know if you can see these. Can you see those inside there? They're pieces of bakur, yeah. And um, I, I need to use this because after you open it, if you don't use it after a while, it will start to um, get real hard and you can't use it. So I'm going to start using this one. I've been using another free, favorite one. And the one I've been using is called Ashgarali. I don't know if you can see that. Ashgarali. You see that? Ashgarali. And um, I fell in love with this. I got this from... Oh my goodness. Uh, Atar Mist. And um, this place is in New Jersey that distributed this in the United States. But they also have a distributor in the UK. They don't stock this anymore in the US. So I had to order from the UK. So I ordered three of these. And actually they were less expensive. But I still had to pay shipping. But with the shipping and by buying um, three of them... I was able to save some money on that, but I loved, I loved, um, Bacour. and I use, since my husband does not have an affinity for smoky stuff, I use an electric Bacour burner and the electric, um, allows me to put my Bacour here. You can see some remnants of what I had the other night in here. And then all I have to do is plugged in, but it's not plugged in right now, but it's plugged in and I have a switch here that would turn it off and on. And I have a regulator. So that on my regulator, I can actually um, put the temperature. I don't know if you can see the temperature on here. This is in uh, Celsius. I can actually put the temperature on what I want, and then it heats up the bakur. Now, if I have this up too 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 high, it will actually burn the bakur instead of um, just heating it up. Because I want like a like I keep mine on um, two two thirty. 230, two, between 200 and 230 uh, Celsius. And it heats it up and it's just a little bit smoky that I can see the, the, the fumes coming off of it. And I really like this. And it, I can also set the timer. I don't know if you can see the timer on here. I can set it from, can you see the timer on here? Don't look at my fingernails. I haven't got my manicure yet. Um, from one, two, three, four, or five hours on here. And with that, uh, I can set it for five hours or I can actually set it so it will stay on all the time. Yeah. So I only do that if I know I'm going to be here. But generally I have for five hours. I turn on in the evening, sit and relax and watch television. I have a snack or something like that. And it is really, really calming. And I read some place where uh, people who have dementia or Alzheimer's, how they benefit from um, aromatherapy like that. Being able to smell different fragrances in the evening or um, when they're going through a period of sundowning. And sundowning uh, usually happens in the when the sun goes down. They start getting uh, behavior gets a little erratic. My father used to suffer from um, that type of uh, sundowning effect. That he would start to get very um, uh, agitated and uh, a little um, uh, a little weird, really weird, in, when the sun went down. So uh, the aroma. I didn't know about that then. I wish I did. Maybe that would have helped somewhat what, instead of just using medication to calm him down. But uh, if you are in a position where you need to um, uh, use some aromatherapy for a loved one who may have, be going through Alzheimer's or dementia, you may want to try that. Consult your doctor first because I'm not a doctor. Just saying. Okay. Next, after my um, journey with Bacour, as I was buying stuff and looking for different sources for it, I stumbled upon... Swiss Arabian as a perfumer based in uh, the Middle East. And uh, my first purchase from Swiss Arabian was uh, perfume oil, concentrated perfume oil. And this one is, this one's called um, Leali Rouge. And actually there's four of them all together. It's Leali Rouge. This one's called Amali. And I don't want to drop them, so I'm not going to pick up all four of them at the same time. Uh, and then we have uh, Leali and then um, Ulali. And the four of them together were called the Leali Sisters. And I got a special where I could get all four of them for like, oh, I think it was like $80 or 
something like that. And so it was only it was less than twenty dollars a piece, and I got free shipping. So um, that was my first foray, and I just fell in love with concentrated perfume oils. Then um, I started. I would only buy those for a while. I had about eight of them. I had, and then um, I decided to buy the um, a spray um, perfume uh, perfume from Swiss Arabian. It blew my mind away, but. I did. I wasn't comfortable with blind buying, so what I actually bought was several uh, samples, and I took those samples and I smelled them. I checked off. I had a, 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 a data sheet, a database, and I knew which ones I liked, which ones I didn't, and I started ordering from that database. And so Swiss Arabian was the very first fragrance, uh, Middle Eastern fragrance house that I started buying from because they gave so many samples, and I could go in and see what I liked without blind buying. Then. I um, started using, uh, uh, going to other Middle Eastern fragrance houses. As I looked more into Swiss Arabian, other Middle Eastern, you know how they do with the cookies and stuff, other stuff started popping up. Then I went to Latafa, and then I went to Afnan, and then I went to um, uh, to Mason Alhambra, and then uh, Al Rehab. So, but a lot of those places do not give samples. So I had to do a lot of blind buy, and, and thankfully, I happened upon Latafa first, and I have never been disappointed with anything I bought, except one 24 karat gold I bought from uh, Latafa. That was so strong, and I wasn't used to the Middle Eastern fragrances at the time either, how powerful they are. But um, that one was a little much for me. I never did get used to that one. I gave that one away. But uh, for the most part, I would say 95% of what I bought from Latafa, I have loved, and they've all been blind buys. And then Afnan, same thing. Never had one from Afnan that I didn't like. And and then also I do some from, um, uh, let's see, Afnan, the Tafa, and um, Mason Alhambra, which is, Mason Alhambra is actually a branch of the Tafa. And I love those three fragrance houses. If I'm going to do a blind buy, I will only blind buy from them uh, with, without looking at somebody I like the bottle because that's a, a lot. I used to do. I like the bottles. If it's a pretty bottle, ew, I'm a sucker for pretty bottles. I've gotten some duds by doing that. But yeah, anyway. But generally, those three: uh, Mason Alhambra, Afnan, and uh, and uh, Latafa are the ones that have never disappointed me because of the way the profile I like, which I love florals and, and a little powdery, uh, just a tiny bit of musk. <coughs> Um, and vanilla in my um, fragrances and so uh, and I try to get those and I look at the notes too I go to the notes on uh, usually if I can find their website I'll go to the perfumers website to find the notes but I'm the more I go along sometimes I'm thinking that the, either they don't put them all on there or they're putting some that aren't there and because it I, I guess they even know that other people are gonna be copying what they put down so um, I have been uh, kind of led astray by sometimes I would buy something thinking it was going to be one thing and I didn't smell anything like that. My nose is, has gotten better as far as being the text um, notes, but it, there's no way near how um, it, it, it could be and hopefully it will be if I keep doing this. I've only been collecting for about three years, but um, I, I, and I, I tend to be a little bit OCD um, when I do things. Uh, I find a pair of sneakers in blue, and I'm not satisfied until I get them in every color. And so I've got tennis shoes all over the place. I had some tights that I bought, and I like to print on them. And next thing I know, I had 30 pairs. Different prints, but I had 30 pairs of them. So um, I love doing that, and I know it, it can be a problem if it's not checked. So, But I don't, I don't tend to do that with expensive stuff. Okay. Which brings to... All of these over a hundred fragrances um, my limit as I've told you before is between 20 and 25 dollars I think I have one I can't remember which one it was that I paid 40 for it and that still hurts um, the least I bought a fragrance for is about seven dollars and that was soft um, I don't think I don't have it yeah I bought soft for about seven dollars and I uh, got that on sale but I use it to layer with a lot of other fragrances, so I don't feel really bad about that soft. You see that soft. And um, the most expensive one, I don't remember which one it was. 
I don't, I really don't remember. And, um, but 99% of what I buy is, is less than 25 and probably another 85 to 90% are less than 20. And then I have some that I've only paid 10 or 12 or $15 like that for it. So yeah. And this has been over the last three years also. Now, um, I have a, a video that I'm going to show you all. I'm not going to be doing all this talking on it. Mm -mm -mm. I didn't plan to do all this talking. But anyway, I have a video that I made that kind of takes you through the inventory of what I have in my collection. And uh, this is my collection uh, as of today. Because I got one on the way. Yeah, I'll share it with you all tomorrow. But anyway, this is Sharon. And this is why this old lady smells so good.